Tina the meatball squisher. She still cooks the Christmas dinner. Every year. Her and my grandmother. They start about uh, two weeks from now. See, the Italian Christmas dinner. I mean, no one leaves the table till you consume twice your body weight. I mean, there is so much food. It's like a, 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 an Olympic endurance event. It, it's insane. I mean, you start out munching on plates of antipasto, and then you sit down, and there's soup and salad and pasta. Then the meal begins, because there's four kinds of meat, eight kinds of vegetable, ten kinds of desserts. You can actually hear the sound of clothes ripping at the seams. One year, my Uncle Gino's belt snapped in two and flew across the room. My mother snatched it in midair and put it in the trophy case with all the others. I get there early. I like to watch them cook. There's a ham, a turkey, a roast beef, a leg of lamb, all waiting to go in the oven. Kind of a death row for entrees. The turkey's smoking his last cigarette. The ham's talking to a priest. Why me, father? I never hurt anybody. You got too fat for your own good, porky. Now you gotta pay. My aunt makes a rum cake. You take one bite, you're in a 12-step program. Then my father, in the middle of the meal, runs to the garden, comes back with a tomato. Big and red. It should be on a velvet pillow. He sets it on the table. And he looks at everybody because he knows this is December. And he says, look at that tomato. Come on, everybody, look at that tomato, eh? Hey, hey you show me a supermarket going to sell you a tomato like that. Forget about it. What are you talking about? Nobody can make a tomato like that. Nobody. Only two people. Me and God. That's it. It's delicious, man. You make a little slice, you put it inside your mouth. It's so good, it could make you forget your own name. Watch, I show you. Who the hell am I now? Hey, I got all the vitamin too. Hey, what are you talking about? I got all the vitamin. Vitamin A, B, X, Y, Z, all the vitamin. Uncle Johnny fell down and broke his leg. I bring him two tomatoes. Pim, pum, pam. He goes out and plays bocce ball. Hey, what are you talking about? My dad actually has pictures of his tomatoes in his wallet. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? He always says that. You know why? He doesn't know what you're talking about. That's why. He came here in 1948. May 10th, 1948. I was 18. I know, I know, I know that. And he still doesn't have the language down right. But if you try to correct him, he'll make you feel stupid. I was with him one night. He goes, oh, Danny, I'm tired. I'm going to go in bed now. I said, no, Dad, you don't say in bed. You say, I'm going to go to bed. He went, hey, I'm not going to go stand next to the bed. I'm going to get inside. Hey, if I'm just going to stand next to the bed, eh, Shamo, you wouldn't even be here right now. I bought him a VCR because he loves to watch soccer games from Italy, and sometimes if they're live, they come on at odd hours. So I figured he could just set the timer. He can't set an egg timer. He needs a VCR that will take verbal commands, just so he could walk up to it and go, I want to watch a soccer game. Sunday. You type it. I forget what channel. <laughs> At the end of the meal, uh, all my uncles and my grandfathers would always do the same thing. Give me the perfunctory goodbye. Put me on their knees. Hey, Danny, come va? Tutto bene? Hey, come va, giovanotto? Hey, Joe, somigli a te questo qui. Everything good in school, Danny? Hey, you get it? Hey, that's good. Okay. Hey, senta. Per casa nostra per Pasqua, okay? You come to our house for Easter, all right? Hey, fa bravo, Danny. Fa bravo. Danny, vieni qui. Danny, Danny. Danny, vieni qui. Danny, vieni This is my great-grandfather, Nonno Andrea. He's 89 years old. He's got Beard stubble like barbed wire, and he smells of wine. Very clean, Danny. Very clean. Mom, I don't want to kiss him. I don't want to kiss him. Danny, he's your great grandfather. He may not be around very much longer. Can I wait, Mom? Can I wait? Very clean, Danny. Very clean. I think I don't want you to. Oh, God. He's slobbering all over me, Mom. <sighs> fa bravo, Danny. Fa bravo. They all said that. Fa bravo. Fa bravo. You know what that means? Be good. Okay, fine, I will be good, but why are you guys all saying the same thing? What did you do when you were my age that I don't know about? Is there a speakeasy or a cat house or a, a, a poker game around the corner? I, I kept expecting when I turned 21, they'd all come to my house and go, Denny, tonight we are going to be bad. It didn't happen. When they were all gone, my dad would sit at the table by himself. And my mom would be in the kitchen. And we were all playing with our new toys, either outside or in our rooms. But he'd sit there on his 16th or 17th glass of wine and survey the damage. And then he'd spot me. Danny, Danny, come on, sit down. Sit down, eh? Uh, hey. I'm going to tell you something. You know, Danny, when I come to this country, I got nothing. 
I got nothing. Now look at tonight. All these people, they come to my house, eh? I feed everybody. I got a nice big house. America, Danny. She's the greatest country in the world. And you don't forget it, eh? He worked hard for his America. He was a waiter of the classy kind, took pride in his work. I mean, if you had gone to Tadich Grill for dinner and you sat at Joe's station, it's like you walked into his own home. Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to see you, ma'am. Where are you people from? Iowa, you're here for convention. Hey, well, you're going to have to have some seafood then because not too many ocean in Iowa. Hey, hey, I bring you a nice seafood salad. You have some wine. Here, have some French bread. I'm going to come right back. By the end of the meal, it didn't matter if you were a garbage man or the sheikh of Kuwait. You felt more important about yourself. And every time you came back to Tadich's, you always said the same thing to the maitre d'. Oh, uh, excuse me, maitre d', would it be okay if we, we sit at Joe's station? Hey, you want to sit at Joe's station? Hey, it's going to be about uh, 45 minutes. I could put you over there right now. Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, look, there he is. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. He left for work at 10 o'clock in the morning, and he came back home at 10 o'clock at night. When he came home, we were asleep. When he woke up, we were in school. So we saw him on Sundays. And we did what he wanted to do, not what we wanted to do. We went fishing for a striped bass out on the bay. Well, he would fish. We would just be in the boat so he could get three extra fish per kid. Or we'd go for abalone. He had two friends he would go skin diving with. Just a wetsuit and snorkel. They'd go down and they'd get abalone at this place called Moss Beach, just above Half Moon Bay. And they'd come back to the shore and they'd pry them out of the shells and cut them into steaks. And my sisters and my brother and I would take hammers, little steel hammers, and we'd hit them real hard to make them nice and soft. And my mom would have a skillet, hot, all ready to go from a fire on the beach. And then they would put them in egg batter and bread them and stick them in the skillet and cook them right there and put them in these fresh French rolls they just bought that morning from the bakery. And they'd eat them on the beach, just like that. What's a sandwich like that cost now? What, 50 bucks? Yeah. You know what I would eat? A hot dog. Yeah, that's the kind of stupid jerk I was. I don't want to eat that. It's slimy. Yeah, in the meantime, I'm chewing on beef lips over here. We always did what he wanted to do. See, I wanted to go to a baseball game. I love baseball, but my dad, all he wanted to do was see soccer. I like going to Candlestick Park and hanging out in the general admission with all the Chicanos from the Mission District. You know, guys in their 20s and 30s, and they come with these big coolers full of wild turkey and cores. They guzzle the wild turkey and then take a beer and shoot that down and get up, and by the 30, and everybody's name was Willie. The batter, Tom Haller. Come on, Willie! Come on, Willie! Come on, Willie! They were my people. That's where I belonged. <laughs> my grandparents were the people I had to go to have fun with. My, my grandmother on my mother's side was the, the funniest person I've ever met. See, she always spoke in Proverbs. I, I was with her at, at a shopping mall, and a woman walks by with a really short skirt and a lot of makeup, kind of cheap looking. My grandmother whispers in my ear, Gonne corte, confessione lunga, which means the shorter the skirt, the longer the confession. Then we saw the same woman buying a dress.